say what's cracking YouTube so if you happen to see me re-upload a video it's because when I initially started doing YouTube I didn't really know that it was certain guidelines that I had to stick to in order to have my videos monetized now that I know that I've went back I've edited out the mistakes and I'm re-uploading some of these videos so I can get paid for them so hopefully if you've seen them before you will watch it again if you haven't seen them then enjoy the video you know I have many more subscribers now than I initially had so there are a lot of people who haven't seen them Anyway, you already know what it is. It's your boy 16 to life. Let's get it. percent of dudes rapping, they ain't nice as me 98% ain't live the same type of life as me The judge gave me life and then they sent me where the life is be That level four with depth and vice, the type of stuff they like to see Two choices, fight or flee, I refuse to die a chump I've never been a mark, but damn it's scary when that riot jump I've seen dudes cry, get pumped, and some sexually brutalized I knew a dude who lost his life and he was only doing five Year long racial fights when homie all you do is ride Lonely days and nights have been a whole cause in suicide From the moment you arrive, you see the Mexican Mafia AB skinheads with big giant swastikas Pro-black philosophers, the BGF, the Kumi And Muslims who will murk you from the nation to the Sunni That MS was loony, quick to ride up on they rival Even Christians went to church, hot knives up in a Bible Political and tribal, the Crips and Damus The long beast, the hubs and the dubs and the grooves The IE, the Bakers feel the day go pie rules the hustlers quick to roll the gangsters don't move whatever click you choose you better stick say what's cracking youtube it's your boy 16 of life and i'm back like i'm on a pro violation yard down now this particular story takes place in probably about 1999 2000 i'm in uh i'm in blythe california at, at a prison called ironwood now I just happened to be out in the yard one day and I see like three or four dudes whooping these dudes, whooping this dude's ass. Now, the dude who was getting his ass whooped, that's really not important. But one of the dudes who was whooping his ass was a dude by the name of, uh, for this, for this story, we're going to call him P. Nasty. Now, the dude whose ass they was whooping, they'd all been knowing each other. They was all some San Diego bloods or whatever. So for whatever reason, I don't know what he done. You know what I'm saying now out in these California prisons. You know, a lot of us will run with a collective or what's known as a car, you know, which, which is basically your homeboy. So whatever. And, and when you fuck up, it's cold because your homeboys is going to be the one to come get you and whoop you and remove you off the yard. Now, whatever he done, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But they felt it was time for him to go. And his parting gift was a few hard lefts and rights. You know what I'm saying? And that's what he got. So. Now, like I say, a lot of these dudes know each other. These dudes happen to be particular homeboys from the street. P. Nasty and the dude that was getting whooped on. You know what I'm saying? And everybody don't necessarily have people that's looking out for him. You know, I used to work with uh, with uh, P. Nasty. Now, he wasn't necessarily doing that good. So, I'm just assuming that his homie, because we'd been on the yard together like two, three years, would look out for him from time to time. Maybe with a bag of rice, some soup, some beans, or whatever, whatever. So, anyway, like I say, I look up. And they on this helmet. Beep, boom, pop, beep, boom, pop. They busting him up. You know, they own him, giving it to him, you know, lefts and rights. Bing, bing. So, you know, at some point in time, the guards on the yard, they see this, they hit the alarm. Yard down, get down, get down. So they run over there. Now, in times where it might be three or four motherfuckers on one person or whatever, there are times when some people will slide away and they'll get away. In this situation right here, P Nasty happened to get away. So when they cuff up the dude who was being whooped on, when they cuff him up, he's walking across the yard. And like I say, he knew everybody that jumped on him. But I guess due to the fact that P. Nasty was his immediate homeboy and they knew each other from the street, I took it as he was hurt. And he was, you know, he was hurt that his, his homie had jumped on him because he was, you know, he was going across the yard. He was handcuffed, but he kept yelling, I'm going to get you P. Nasty. I'm going to get you P. Nasty. P. Nasty. You know, that motherfucker was mad as a motherfucker, you know. So me and P. Nasty, we just so happened to work in the kitchen. Now, P. Nasty had a original voice. So it was like the next day or two days later, he came, you know, he was like, yeah, yeah, chill. Yeah. Did you see us out there? Yeah. We had to put a demo down, you know, so he was laughing and giggling and shit. And so, you know, now fast forward about two years later. Now, me and P. Nasty, we happen to be on another yard. We on a yard this time, same prison, and we in the same building. Now, P. Nasty was in the, um, with a cell with another dude. We'll just call him Mac. You know what I'm saying? So, 
Now, we all in this building, like I said, we had been over there for a while. Everybody is cool with each other, Crips and Bloods and all that. We living in the same building. We chilling with, you know, chilling up in there gambling, playing dominoes or whatever, you know, laughing, watching, watching the basketball game and all that old type of shit. So now, at some point, they was passing out the mail. So now, Mac, he happens to get a 128G, which is basically, it's a, it's a verbal, it's a verbal warning, but it is, it has been documented on paper. So in the event you do it again, you know, they'll, they'll say, okay, well, you'd already been warned about this. And so he like, and so what the, uh, what the, what the 128G was, the verbal warning was the nighttime guard who was walking at night and counting when we, when we're, when we're locked in the cell, she said that she seen him up there masturbating or whatever, you know, jacking off and exposing himself to her. So he like, what the fuck's going on? He like, man, I, I ain't been exposing myself to no, uh, no female CO. She got me fucked up. She must have me confused with another cell or whatever. This gotta be, this gotta be a mistake or whatever. So he go out there, he go to the yard, he discuss it with, you know, some of his other, uh, uh, blood partners or whatever, whatever. So they can't, you know, they can't figure it out. So, you know, they talk about, okay, whatever. So then maybe about a month or two later, he get another one, but this time it's a write-up. It's a 115. This time, so it's a higher disciplinary action. He had to go have a hearing. He had to go and, and talk to the lieutenant, and he could possibly lose, you know, he could possibly lose time in, in, in prison, you know, 30 more days added to a sentence, 60 more days, or whatever, whatever. You know, like I'm saying, this one here is more serious than a 128. So, you know, how, how the procedure happens is they'll serve you the 115. Then maybe about three or four days or whatever, they call you to the office. You know, you go over there, you plead your side, you know, the lieutenant and listen nine times out of ten they're gonna find you guilty you know what i'm saying of whatever whatever 115 it is because a, a co didn't wrote you up and a lieutenant gotta listen to it he gonna support his co's you know so like i say he go over there so now what happened is he tell him hey listen man i don't know what y'all got going on i ain't been jacking off the no co well they say well listen man aren't you assigned to you know the cell number uh upper bunk whoop de whoop he said no man he said well yeah i'm assigned to the upper bunk but I sleep on the lower bunk. And how that works is most of the time when you go into a cell, it'll be already somebody in there and they'll be on the bottom bunk. But when they leave, you jump down to the bottom bunk because if you in the cell first, you get the bottom bunk. So the next dude who will come in while he's officially signed to the bottom bunk, he's sleeping on the top bunk. And that was the scenario in this situation right here. So P Nasty, who was sleeping, who was assigned to the bottom bunk, was sleeping on the top bunk. And he was exposing himself. So now when the guards see this, she just see a person at night doing this thing, jacking off. So she write the dude up who's on the top bunk. She go look at her chart. She see the name. She write this dude up, not knowing that that's not the person that's jacking off. So anyway, Matt come back from the hearing. So he mad as a motherfucker. So he get, go get at the other bloods in the building and let them know what's going on. Now, unbeknownst to P. Nasty, his nasty ass, he's still walking around the building. He don't know. He got a major ass whooping coming. And they ain't said nothing to him about it. So he don't even know. You know what I'm saying? So he walking around, you know, doing doing what he normally do or whatever. So once they figured out what they was going to do, they sent a dude by the name of Rookie. And uh, it was Mac. And I think it might have been one more. You know what I'm saying? So like I said, we in the day room. We chilling. All of a sudden, we look up. They didn't hopped on P. Nasty's helmet. Bing, boom. They busted him up. Bing, bing, bop, boop, boop. Now, he don't know where this shit is coming from. They own his motherfucking ass. You know what I'm saying? They didn't mix this motherfucker like some wet cement. They didn't knock him down, you know, knock him all up out of his shoes and shit. Matter of fact, they kicking him in all type of shit. Now, the footwork they putting on this motherfucker was phenomenal. You know what I'm saying? I'm just assuming that if Michael Jackson was there, he would have been impressed by that footwork. You know what I'm saying? He probably would have been like, Wow. You guys are really good with your feet, you know, <laughs> probably some shit like that, you know. So anyway, like I say, they they busting him up. They whooping him, kicking him. Matter of fact, they didn't beat him out of both his motherfucking shoes. So now the guard who's in the building at who's sitting at the podium, he's reading the newspaper. He don't see none of this shit or he's doing something. He don't see none of this shit. You know what I'm saying? So P Nasty. Now he after they finish whooping on him, he's sitting on the floor. He looking around. It's like you can see them cartoon birds going around his motherfucking head. He don't know what the fuck is going on. Because now when he get his ass whooped, 
Of course, everybody in the day room, we watching the fight. So now he look up, he dizzy as a motherfucker. He see everybody staring at him. He trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. So now he look up, he get up, he look down, he see he ain't got no shoes on. He see one of his shoes right there. So he grab one shoe, put the shoe on. Now his other shoe, he, he spot his other shoe, but the other shoe is a little bit too close to his previous assailants. So he looked like, man, fuck that shoe. It's time to get up out this motherfucker. Exit stage left. So he walked to the podium. And uh, he go tell the guard. Now the guard is like, you know, doing a crossword puzzle or some shit. So he go, he go tell the guard, they got me. I gotta go. The guard look up. The guard say, what? Yeah, they got me. I can't be here. So the guard look up and see that, you know, he he he's bruised all up and busted up. So the guard hit the alarm. You know, yard down. So. Everybody in the day room got to get down now. They handcuff old P Nasty, walk his nasty ass on up out of there. You know what I'm saying? They take him to the hole. I never see him again. You know what I'm saying? So that's what it's like sometimes in these California prisons. One year you can be the victimizer. The next year you can fuck around and be the victim. You know what I'm saying? So you always got to stay on your P's and Q's when you're in these prisons, man. You can't break no infractions and you got to do what you got to do or niggas will bring you your hat and put it on your motherfucking ass. You know what I'm saying? So hopefully y'all was entertained by that story right there. It's been real, man. Oh, you know what? I forgot to tell y'all too. Resume normal program. The crackers let me out the gate, now the pressure's on We bout to get this shit straight like a pressing cone The wrong cat to get aggressive on I bring the bitch up out of niggas Why you think they got them dresses on? My reach long and that's the best type To have some dirty white boys come and smoke you like a meth pipe And leave your chest bright, red like a fire truck Kicking your mom's door at night, nigga, and tire up I'm wild as fuck and I'm respected by the new youth I put this pistol in their ear like a Bluetooth I blow their brains on they new coupe and have red everywhere just like a function full of soup boots. Tell your troops I deal with beef like a butcher My 4-5 pump more guys than Ashley Kusher Line pusher, quick to bury your clown Nigga, I stayed in the park like the merry-go-round Get it? The gang greasy bitch, they can't need me Oh, your niggas don't know my name The gang greasy bitch, they can't need me I'm out here doing my thing The gang greasy bitch, they can't need me I swear in time. Crazy bitch that came.